If you need help or know someone who does, go to WISN.com slash opioids for resources ready to help. You can also scan the QR code on your screen. And remember, some of our experts will take your questions live on the 12 News Facebook page immediately after this program. We've met a lot of adults who are leading the fight against the opioid crisis, but there are also teens. Neil Dogra is a senior at the University School of Milwaukee who founded the Opioid Epidemic Awareness Campaign. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And I read somewhere that you didn't know you were going to pursue a career fighting addiction until you heard something on the radio. That's exactly right. I actually, I've lived in this area around Milwaukee my entire life. And I had no idea what an opioid was until I was in my freshman year of high school. Um, my dad's one of those people that just refuses to listen to music when he drives his car. And so he had a radio talk on. Uh, it was a radio talk done by two professors who were talking about their research with the opioid epidemic and the uh, trends that they were uncovering as they looked at fatality reports. Um, it was really eye-opening to hear that one of the leading causes of, causes of non-natural deaths in my city was uh, this class of drugs that I had never heard of. Uh, and it was also very inspiring. I just wanted to learn more about what I can do as a student to uh, maybe make a little bit of a difference. So you worked with social welfare researchers to analyze these trends. What did you learn from that? I would say my biggest takeaway was opioids are pervasive in Milwaukee and they are not just affecting one single demographic. And that's what makes opioid addiction so difficult to combat is that um, nobody is invulnerable to these terrible, terrible pills. So tell me a little bit more about the opioid epidemic awareness campaign. Well, essentially what really stuck with me and frankly what bothered me was the fact that I have lived here my whole life. I consider myself to be a proud resident of the area and an informed citizen, and yet I had no idea what was going on. And so my concern was how many more kids don't know what's going on and how many more kids are therefore vulnerable to opioid addiction uh, because they don't have access to the proper education. Uh, so within that, with that in mind, I started the Opioid Epidemic Awareness Campaign to essentially make a difference uh, through public awareness. The idea is if we can exponentially spread information and awareness, we can hopefully make citizens from kids to adults more informed about what's going on and along the way hopefully inspire some more people to uh, take charge and, and take a stance against opioid addiction. And so along with speaking to middle and high school students, you even made a documentary on your phone. Tell us about that. Well, when uh, COVID first hit, I was really uh, worried about how I would keep up with my epidemic awareness campaign. Um, In-person presentations uh, were no longer feasible. And also I was concerned because, well, let's face it, I'm, I'm a senior right now. I'm going to college next year. And um, there's a good chance that I won't be in Wisconsin anymore. And so I wondered, how will I be able to keep my message going and keep this campaign uh, strong and present? And so with that in mind, um, and with a bit of a background in filmmaking, I decided to make a short documentary on what's going on, uh, hopefully an inspiring story that I was able to spread throughout the Milwaukee public school system. Neil plans to pursue a career in medicine and addictionology. On April 24th, the Drug Enforcement Agency is holding its National Drug Take Back Day. Police departments across the country, including here in southeast Wisconsin, are joining the DEA. The assistant special agent in charge for the Milwaukee District Office, John McGarry, is here tonight. Give us the history of Drug Take Back Day, how it came about, and its primary goal. Uh, Drug Take, Take Back Day is uh, DEA's response to the increase of prescription pharmaceuticals that were illegally diverted uh, into our communities. And DEA realized that oftentimes citizens had sitting prescription drugs sitting in their medicine cabinets, sitting in their homes, and they had no way of disposing of them. And this gives folks an opportunity to drop these off at select locations and dispose of them worry-free. The problem was that while these narcotics were sitting in people's homes, oftentimes they'd be stolen or diverted for illicit means, unbeknownst to the homeowner or the original uh, recipient of the prescription. Is it safe to say, or what would be your estimate of the percentage of homes that have prescription drugs just sitting in there, sitting in the home with the potential to be taken, stolen, or simply abused by someone in the household? That would be tough to measure, but I'll give you a, I'll give you a statistic I think is, is, is equally telling and informative about 51% of the people that are surveyed uh, said that they got prescription drugs from a friend or family member, uh, either from stealing it from a residence or were handed directly through a, an illegal transaction. But most of those being stolen or, or 
diverted illegally. And what is law enforcement seeing uh, in terms of criminal activity, in terms of uh, the peddling of opioids? Heroin uh, has decreased and fentanyl has increased. And oftentimes folks that have begun using uh, diverted pharmaceuticals or prescription controlled drugs uh, seek out other drugs to satisfy the addiction. And instead of getting legitimate prescription drugs, they're, they're either being sold knowingly or unknowingly counterfeit uh, prescription control drugs containing oftentimes lethal doses of fentanyl. What else should people do with their leftover uh, prescription medication that's in their home? You know, I, I think that isolate, segregate, and, and lock them away. There's a lot of commercially available home use medical lock boxes. If you have to have something in your home, just lock it away. Just that, that one moment's isolation physically of something from an opportunistic grab by somebody that shouldn't have access to it. So just lock it away. John will join us in a few minutes to take your questions during our live discussion on the WISN 12 News Facebook page after this special. Next on the front lines of the fight here in Wisconsin, Attorney General Josh Call. Why the state's top prosecutor says we cannot prosecute our way out of this epidemic. We'll be right back.